Okay, folks, thanks very much for joining us. This evening I'm going to be showing you how to convert a, a glass lifting suction cup holder into a really strong, extra strong rod holder. Um, so before we kick off, I'll show you why I use these suction cups over magnets or even the shop bought ones, and I'll just test it out here. So as you can see, it's, it's extremely strong. Um, yeah, so the first thing we need to do is we need to drill a hole in the middle. So I've already done one in this one just before I decided to actually make a video. Um, but this is an 8mm hole just down the centre of it, just using a drill. And then through this we need to be putting in a, an M8 or an 8mm bolt, thick bolt. And the length of the bolt is about 150mm. Um, so that will be going in. It's, it has to be a hex bolt as well so you can use uh, a socket rivet to, to secure it or a spanner. So just feed that through. And if, if you'll see, I put in a wee bit of rubber at the bottom. You can use a rubber washer. I've just used a wee bit of an offcut of um, shrink tubing, and that's to give a bit of friction as well. So we're wanting this to rotate. Next, we just put down one of our bolts and just bring it right down. I'll speed this up during the video to make it a wee bit easier. But we just want that to go the whole way down. I'm sorry, the nut to go the whole way down to the base. Secure that in. And as I said, you can use your socket wrench, you can use this two spanners and just, you know, make sure that's really well secure. Um, not too tight, but tight enough for it to be holding well and won't turn. Okay, the next thing we need to do is um, just basically the bolt is, is pure steel. Um, so what you can do is you can colour this with some insulation tape or what I have just by chance I have some of the um, strength tubing so just to make it neater but again it's not essential it's just a, a totally optional part of this and it won't perform any better so what I need to do then is I just instead of just using the lighter the whole time um, I just light a candle and I use that just to um, reduce the size of the strength tubing you have a neater finish Okay, then we want to think about the tubing as well. Um, so here I have it's 20 mil tubing. You could use 25 mil tubing. It's entirely up yourself, but it's good sturdy plastic tubing. And you want to mark, you want to mark where you'll be cutting it. It could be 10 inches, it could be 12 inches, and use a saw. It could be any kind of saw yourself, really. I'm just using a hacksaw here. Just watch your fingers while you're doing it. So move this out of the way. And basically what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put a hole down the middle of this. And that's because then that will go into the bolt. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm measuring up to get the exact centre point. And then marking up with a bit of chalk to drill on top. Whenever you're drilling through, just ensure that it goes right through the middle, not off to the side, else it'll impact the, the strength of the tubing. Once you've drilled your hole, then you can put it back onto your um, your suction cup just to test out to see, you know, is it is it going to be a good fit? Do you need to make a wider hole? And it should be grand. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to put in these are called T nuts um, and they're they're prawn T nuts. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm putting this up to some heat, so again a candle, and that'll heat up the prawns, and then it means that if I put pressure from the pipe on the prawn, um, it'll actually melt into the pipe. I'll give a very secure hold, but it'll also using these T nuts will prevent it spinning around on the bolt itself. So here it's heated up, and I'm just pressing into the tube. Making sure that that's as flush as possible, the tube as possible. 
and again I'm repeating the process on the other side so you have a T-nut on both both ends. Okay, so now that's done. You've left you basically marks for the T-nuts to go back in, so you can take those out for now. And we're gonna be putting on some bun bungee cords. So before we do that, I'm gonna just get a wee bit of sandpaper and just sand it all down, um, just wherever you cut, wherever you drilled into. And that's really just to remove all those rough edges um, because the bungee cord hitting it could impact it and over time bungee cord might fray. Okay, so now you get your bungee cord. Um, for the length of tube that I'm using, I think it was about 10 or 11 inches. So I'm gonna use bungee cord of a length of a meter. So I measure that out. The bungee cord we're using is four mil thick. So just cut off at that length of a meter. And bungee cords made of different several fibers of, of elastic so you want to burn that in just to make sure that nothing frays off and unravels okay so now you need to get both of the ends and just tie a knot just which will create a one large loop of bungee cord Pull that tight. Once you've done this, then you you put your bungee pun cord down. I'm sure that the the knot that you've just done is in the middle, and basically you're wanting to create a knot on both sides of that middle knot. And essentially, what you want to do is create three loops: a central loop and then a loop on each end. And the reason why we're doing this is the central loop will be the one that will be secured through the tubing by the bolt. So you can test that just to make sure. I'll show you here. Okay, so next thing we need to do is just thread that um, bungee cord up into the tubing. And feel free to use screwdriver or whatever else as well to push it up if you find it difficult. Essentially, we're wanting that central loop to be where the drilled hole is. It can be a bit fiddly at this stage, but it just have to take a time. You can use your your screwdriver or a bolt just to push that bungee cord round to ensure that it's at both sides of the bolt and you've created that loop. And be sure to test it before you you think you're finished. Okay, so you can see me testing here just to make sure that those knots are well secured in and stop at the bolt. Okay, now we can get our T nuts and put them back on, just using the existing holes, making sure they're as flush as possible at the end of the pipe. Okay, so next thing we need to do is just put another nut on to basically where you finished off previously, making sure you've got enough space for the piping. And then we can screw our piping in. And again, this is where the T-nuts come in because it'll just, it should just wind down. And then it will hit the nut. Um, just before you get to the end of the nut, make sure you stop. 
because this is stage one I put in some glue and you can use some really strong adhesive I'd recommend Gorilla Glue but you know it's, it's any person's preference but it's absolutely it's a really strong glue really good waterproof glue as well so put that on and then I wind it further on down and then that'll hold that in place and again we do that at the top end as well so um, put a bit of Gorilla Glue on top of the tea nut and then put down the the, um, the nut on top of it well, this stage can get a bit messy so if you want to wear gloves or you'll see I start to use the spanner actually to secure it because they too much glue in the hands at this stage Once you've got everything secured and the glue's on, then you just have to leave it about 24 hours or so and then come back. Just let it fully cure. Then once you come back, you'll be able to see that you've now got basically the essence of very secure rod holders. And as you can see, because of what we've done with the friction of the wishers and the glue, it actually rotates as well, which is really handy with a, um, with a curved bonnet. Okay, so now we'll just want to protect protect it as well. So before we do that, again, totally optional, but I'm just putting in another wee bit of, um, of sh shrink shaving. Again, it's just purely cosmetic. And then now I'm going to put on some foam and this will help secure it and protect your rod and your reels. Ideally if you wanted you could use some grip tape from sports like a tennis racket or a hurling, hurling stick. Um, but this foam is fairly cheap. So it's just the same length as your, your tubing. And then you can curve off the ends if you want. You can use a bench grinder or scissors, whatever you want yourself. As you can see here what I've done. Okay, so then I just start to open up the the foam and this is just insulation you know this is pipe lagging um, and I'm, I'm making a mark here in the center point and this will be where I can put it in over the bolt so just drill a hole or pierce the hole whatever you prefer and then set it over and then to secure that in just get yourself some insulation tape and I just do a few wraps throughout it and that will help really help secure that in Okay, so you can leave it like that yourself. Um, that looks well. It's, um, or you could use tape the whole way round if you wanted, um, and you know to cover all the grey. But I have some of this. This is more shrink stuff, but this is this is stuff that you use on battery packs. So it's, like it's cheap enough, like you know. But um, I just put this over. So I'm just cutting the length. I'm basically cutting it the length a bit shorter in each end. It doesn't have to cover the whole amount. And then once you've got that, um, it just you apply a bit of heat. So here I'm using a hair dryer, and you'll get to see it just shrinks. As I said, it gives that neater finish, but definitely not essential. And then I'm just neatening up again, just using a wee bit of the black insulation tape around the center pieces, and then also around the ends as well. Okay, so we're nearly there now, folks. 
Um, so want to make sure that I can put in a bolt so it can be a dome bolt, it can be a wing nut, tie it up to yourself. But I'm putting on a bit of glue here, another bit of Gorilla Glue. I'm going to put this nut in and it's very important this is extremely secure because this will be what's basically holding down your rods with the bungee cord. So make sure you get this right, make sure you use that, the good glue. And then again let that set for 24 hours and basically that's it. You know, you've got your bungee cord there, you'll put it through and it'll be secured by the, the dome nut. I always use the bungee cord on both sides, even if I've only got one rod, because both sides, it gives more tension and better security. Hopefully you find that useful. Thanks very much, folks.